And as Mark said, it's all been a little bit last minute. We just came up with this idea to do this uh, yesterday afternoon in the bath. <laughs> and so we have pulled together everything we can remember <coughs> and all the photographs and all the materials from our Southern Upland Bay really record attempt back in 1996. Um, so, the Southern Upland Way. Um, you see the red line, obviously, going from Colgard's Path in the um, east to Port Patrick in the west, 214 miles. And you see through lots of lovely hills. A wee bit of history um, about the Southern Uplands, or not history, geography to start with. Um, many of you, I'm sure, have run through the Southern Uplands, but these are um, hills that were sculpted by glaciers, like most of Scotland's mountains and hills. But they're much more gently rolling than, obviously, the highlands of Scotland, and are much lower, obviously. There's many that rise over 2,000 feet, but none above 3,000 feet. And the Southern Upland Way is one of Scotland's great trails, and considered to be one of the UK's most challenging and is in fact the first coast-to-coast -coast trail that was put together. Um, so, as I mentioned before, it's 214 miles running from Port Patrick to Coburn's Path. It's suburb, it's varied for walking and for running and many people don't actually go anywhere near it in terms of walkers or runners because they're so... Um, fixed on going up to the highlands and all our other wonderful places to run and to walk. People normally take about 12 to 16 days to walk the way. Of course, we plan to run it in less than a day and a half. As you do, can I think. <laughs> Oops. Um, along the way, this is the scenery. Typical. So there's something for everybody. Lovely bridges, lovely vistas. Much more rolling and rounded than the highlands, of course. And um, there had been a, an attempt, had been a record sent by Livingston in, I think, around 1990, a men's team. And the really rules for that record that was set are as follows, which is what we decided to put together a team and try and the men were going to break the record and the ladies were going to set a record. So you need a team of five runners. You have to run the whole full length of the Sun Upland Way. You can have as many change overs as you like, but the team have to start together and finish together, whether that's a few hundred yards, quarter of a mile, 10 miles, whatever you like. Um, during the night and the dark sections, it, I don't think it's um, compulsory, but it's highly advisable to have somebody running it's, with it's you. It's compulsory. compulsory. Yeah. And was highly useful, as you'll hear as this presentation continues. And you have to pass some kind of token. Now, the men passed a medal, but we actually can't remember what we passed, but we passed something. Because <laughs> it's a long time ago. <laughs> so, planning. Well, there's lots and lots went into the planning, and I'm going to hand over to Hilary at this point because she was one of the master planners. And we've got lots to say about planning because the devil is in the details. <laughs> Absolutely. So... Um... We were greatly assisted by Livingston's schedule for when they set the record in 1990. John Kuhn from Livingston Athletic Club, which um, morphed into Lothian, gave us access to all their information, which was great. Um, the record that they set was 30 hours and 10 minutes. Um, what you have to remember about this is that it was 1996 and I've got a file this thick of paper um, which, was, which went into the planning. Um, the most complicated thing was the support planning and dropping runners and picking runners up again. It's far, far further to drive the Southern Upland Way than it is to run it. So the logistics of getting people to the right places at the right time was extremely complicated. Um, mobile phones were in their infancy. Um, so we had... Um, we had one amongst the two teams that was owned and we borrowed, Nikki and I borrowed some from our work. So we had three mobile phones and we were very worried about them running out of juice. But also there was very little coverage and I think there probably still is very little coverage in the Galloway area. 
We had um, on, on our team, um, you'll see a list of the team members in a minute, but Jane Robertson was going to run um, as, as one of us. We all, we all ran five legs, so, so, five, five, so 25 legs amongst us. So we were all running between 40 and 50 miles in total over the time that we did it. And Jane was one of the people who was running for us. And then very, very close to the deadline, she broke her wrist which knackered her for her um, works football team, which was a great <laughs> disaster, but also caused us a great problem. Um, and very, very fortunately, we knew of Kay Dodson, who I'm pleased to say is in the audience tonight. Kay, um, famous ultra runner. Um, and she had already been all over the Southern Upland Way um, in preparation for a solo attempt on it. So Kay knew the route. So that was, that was very, or very so useful. so we thought. Or so. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, support. Um, yeah, change, changeovers. Um, we largely followed Livingston's plan, but not entirely. There was one very long leg towards the end, which they'd done a very long leg because um, of the difficulty getting a car into a changeover point. But, you know, we're Carnethy, we were tough, so we were willing to trek into the changeover point and things like that. But largely we followed um, Livingston's one. Um, we made bookings in youth hostels. We started off at Abbey St. Bathans, where we had a youth hostel booking for the night before. We had one lock head for the middle of the night, and actually we, so we booked. The warden was very helpful there. None of these hostels exist any longer, um, but we had a dorm booked that we could use 24-7, hot bedding and things like cooking and <laughs> things like that, provided we were very quiet and crept in <laughs> um, and didn't tell any of the other residents what we were doing. Um, we also planned um, to put up tents at Calden's campsite um, in the middle of Galloway where we could get a bit of kip um, planned. You'll hear more about that later. Uh, crucially, we wrecked the whole thing um, in advance. Um, so that involved lots of trips from Edinburgh going down and, and looking at things. And there were quite a few adventures in that process. That had its own challenges. Yes, well, I tell one of the stories. <laughs> So there's no mobile phones, of course, so when um, you end up in the middle of nowhere, yeah, what happens? Yeah, so there was one, um, one evening, weekday evening, when um, Robin Morris, who many of you will remember, Robin offered to take a carload of runners down to, to recce things. We think Adam Ward was in the car, John Coyle was in the car, Andy Spensley and Jane Robertson were in the car. So they dropped Adam off, who was going to be running the first leg, and then Robin realised he was out of petrol. So, <laughs> so they drove to Berwick and filled up with petrol, came back and dropped John Coyle off to run his leg. And at about 10 o'clock at night, it was in June, 10 o'clock at night, dropped Andy and Jane off to recce their route. Meanwhile, I was back in Edinburgh, and by midnight I hadn't heard anything. No mobile phones, of course. Um, so at midnight, I phoned Robin's wife, Roz, and got her out of bed and said, have you heard anything from this carload? No, she'd not heard anything at all. So by this time, I was up and beginning to get quite worried. At 2 a.m., I got a phone call from Andy. He and Jane had finished their run, no one to meet them, something had gone wrong with the communications, if they had no extra kit, eventually they'd found a phone box, and Andy tells me he had a BT charge card in his rucksack. Does anybody remember, remember them? <laughs> no money, but a BT <laughs> charge card. So he phoned me in Edinburgh at 2 a.m. Um, and I agreed to get in the car and drive down and pick them up. So, so I leapt in the car. I, I gather, I think they were doing bunny jumps along the, the road trying to keep warm. And they'd hung a Carnethy vest on a lamppost in the hope of attracting Robin. Um, exactly. Anyway... The kind of vest the, all the, the time. Duster, the duster. The duster. Remember these? Um, you should pass it around so you can have a feel of the texture. <laughs> <laughs> so, sod's law, five minutes after this phone call, Robin turned up for the rendezvous. But of course, I was already in the car driving down to, <laughs> to Lauder to pick them up. So they had to hang around in Lauder waiting for me to turn up. Robin had been to the police station at this point. So there are a number of stories like that. Have I missed anything on this? I think in planning, I think that's 
That was it. I mean, there was lots more went on behind the scenes in terms of planning, and we've got hundreds of bits of paper. Oh, one of the yeah. funny things in planning was, once the plan was all put together, a lot of people didn't have email. That's Anybody? right, yeah. So Hillary wrote it as a letter with her address and everything at the top and posted it to people. We have so this letter. I was <laughs> sending about 15 documents, 15 letters a week for about four weeks, changing the support plan, changing the numbers of runners. And um, this wasn't the dark ages. This is 1996. Uh, you know, very few people, <laughs> some of the team had email, but, very, but many of the support team and didn't some have don't email. Even know. So the, the, are we going on to yes. these difficult, oh, the here team. we go. The team. So, the team. And this is in the order that we, we ran. Um, so obviously myself and Hilary, Key, who's with us here this evening, and who couldn't come, and Angela, obviously, who you all know very well and presented at our last winter talk. Um, the men's team, I think we've only got Jamie here this evening, who might come and say a few words at some point. But um, I think you probably all know most of the team there. And then we had a huge support team. There's a few others who are not here and who are in the background, helped us with wrecking, driving us around in the middle of the night, and so on. And then we had a team of folks giving us a massage. I have nice. to say, I don't remember getting any massage. But <laughs> <laughs> I think Nikki had several. And apparently, apparently the support team had lots of massage. I do um, remember. But I do remember that Hillary was so well organised that you could get a shower every time you... At least I did. <laughs> she said, every time I met you, you've just had a shower. Because it was a youth fossil oh, or we've a just, campsite. We've just wheeled back. Sorry, how did um, you do that? Sorry, let me and the, Camus Nimmo was on there. I think Camus was 10 at the time, and he was in possession of the mobile phone and Which manning race brick, control. You know, so one of the instructors to our, instructions to our support team was that they had to phone Camus as soon as possible after a, a handover. There were other complicated things about handovers because we didn't know what would, hap what would happen if you turned up and your next runner wasn't there. So we agree what we agreed would happen was we all carried a bit of chalk and... <laughs> If you got there and the next runner wasn't there, then the instruction was to wait for 15 minutes and then chalk on the ground or a stone or something to say, Hillary left here and the time, and then keep on running. And um, so that, that <laughs> interesting, that wasn't actually the problem that we had, but you'll hear more about a problem that we did have. So moving on a bit more on planning, this was, I think, the, the men's team plan, yeah. who was going to be going when in which car and transferring bags and people, so you don't need to... It's just to give you detail, an indication of kind of how complicated it was. Handwritten. This is the handwritten schedule. <laughs> and um, somewhere I've got the master map. Nikki, did you see that master map? I did, I saw it a minute ago. You had it somewhere in here. Super document. There, it's there. Over there, over here. Oh, yeah. Right, this was the... <laughs> this was the... This was the really important bit. And as I said, much, much, much harder to do it by road than it was to do it. Have I got it the right way up? Yes. Um, to do it road. on the ground. So. Um, and everybody who was involved in the sport plan had a few paragraphs oh, yeah. about what they had to do. So we don't expect you to read all of this. It's just to show you the detail. There's three pages of this. Okay, but Hillary's going to read out Bill's plan. What Bill had to do. What Bill had to do. So you don't need to memorise any of this running, but it's actually it's quite just funny. it's just an indication. And every member of the support team had a paragraph like this. So Bill Gold, starting Abbey St Bathans, either Bill's or Harry's car drives to the start at Coburn's Path with Nikki, Angela, and Hilary on board, and Bill and Harry if they want to be in on the action. Then return to Abbey St Bathans for breakfast. Leaving Abbey St Bathurst with Angela on board, Bill drives to Watchwater Reservoir, collects Hillary, drops Angela, change over approximately 9am. With Hillary on board, collect Angela at a particular junction, drive to Kirkhouse, leave Hillary, drive to Tibby Shields, collect Hillary and Nikki, transfer Angela to Harry, drive Hillary and Nikki to One Lock Head, rest, eat, etc. <laughs> there was a big pan of pasta. I remember a lot of pasta at One Lock Head and this dormitory that which supposedly we could sleep in but in actual fact um, we were too wired to sleep really um, well that was one lock head pick up car oh pace uh, hang on hang on drive Hillary to one lock head rest eat etc Angela will drive your car to Sanker to await your arrival after pacing Hillary one lock head to Sanker leaving approximately um, quarter to one on Sunday morning so Bill was running with me in the dark 
Car won't leave one lock head until after you do, so kit is no problem. Pick up car with Hillary at Sanker at 2.25, find somewhere to camp, more of which later. Take Hillary to Blackwater, collect Nikki, change over roughly 8.35, drive Nikki to Calden's campsite with shower, um, and transfer her to Jim, collect Hillary there. Drive Hillary to Whitley's, drop her approximately 15.45, collect Hillary at Knock approximately 16.30 and drive her to the end to run back. So that's just the kind of details briefing that we had to so give the, all our support. So the running bit was actually the easy bit. We just oh, ran gosh. and then people yes. magically turned up, picked us up and our bags, took us to the next shower. So moving on, um, this in terms of planning is, this is the men's team um, plan of timings but also comments about the routes that we're going to do, the each section they were going to do, whether it was easy, moderate, boggy, whatever. Just something to throw that in. We knew and that Livingston had gone a bit wrong in the night um, and we were particularly concerned about navigation in the night. Mm -hmm. um, so you can see where the dark section is for example over here. We knew that, oops, what have I done? I've turned everything off. <laughs> Bear with me. <laughs> This is the pointer, so like these sections here are going to be in the dark. And this is, this is the handover from car to car, with the cars at the top. Um, this is the girls' timing, so this is roughly what we expected based on our recce's. The boys seem to stick to their recce time within four minutes or something, because they were really going to break the record, whereas we were just out for a jolly, because we were going to set the record, which, which we did, but we did run quite fast. And by the time we got to about um, Kirk House, I think, which was where it started to get exciting. We're about half an hour ahead. Yeah. So, oh, well, let's go back to the start. So yeah. this is us getting ready finally to start running. So it's six o'clock in the morning at Coburn Staff. We started two hours ahead of the men. So they could chase us. <laughs> They've been chasing us ever since. See the lovely ladies? So there's us setting off together in our lovely cotton Carnethy vests, all the rage at the time. And Angela's got on her nice flowery trousers too. And you see some... The suspects you might recognise in the background here. Oh, on that thing again. <coughs> Over here, some of these chaps, That's our support really team. Make them see yourself. Hasn't changed a bit. Meanwhile, Jamie was having fun and having a look at the map in his nice vest. And, oh, this is when it starts to get exciting. So this is at the Kirk right. House. Go back a minute. Do you go want back? to say anything about your first leg and your, your companion on route? Oh, yes. I Just go back a slide. Story. Mark, tell us if we're going on too much, because really we're getting quite into it now. <laughs> <laughs> in the first leg, I set off from um, Coburn's Path at 6 o'clock in the morning by myself. There's nobody around, and suddenly there's Robin Morris appears out of the bushes. <laughs> As he does, but he's not in running kit. He's got on his nice leather black shoes, all polished up and everything, as smart as he gets or got. And he started running with me, and he ran with me for about 20 minutes up a hill, up some steps, and chatting away, quite the thing. And then off he went. And that's the kind of club Carnethy is, you know, people just turn up and run with you. So we're about half an hour ahead of schedule here. I see him looking yep. at the watch. Hillary's taking over for me. This is at Kirk House, just I think I've come over the Three Brethren. Um, and Hillary yep. knows the boys are behind us now and they're chasing us. Yes, so I, I hadn't expected that. We were always wondering when the men were going to catch us up, but I now knew that Jamie was on my tail. Um, and in fact, the next slide. Is Here comes Adam, just a, a hand over to Jamie. A few minutes later, so Jamie's on my tail and I'm tanking off towards St Mary's Loch all the time. So Jamie big shorts. Do you want to add a comment? <laughs> <laughs> it was the 1990s. And they were all the rage. Yes. <laughs> so this was, this was quite a long leg up over the hill and down to St Mary's Loch. And I was determined to keep ahead of Jamie as, as far as I possibly could. And I was sure he was going to pass me. I was sure he was going to pass me on the, on the way. Um, but actually, I managed to get down to St Mary's Loch before he did pass me. Um, he passed me just as we got to the loch and we had to go along the loch. Um, so he came in about five minutes ahead of me, but we were, we were pretty pleased with how we were doing it at that so this point. Is obviously Jim and Hammond handing over to John with Hilary, who's run so fast she's down to her bra. <laughs> <laughs> handing over to Kate. So then, 
we did lots of other things and lovely sections, but because we didn't have phones with cameras, we didn't take any more pictures because the supporters were all busy, too busy supporting us. But we're going to talk about the running in the dark bit. And so we had a few adventures. And in fact, we have Kay who's going to tell us about what happened to her in the middle of the night with Nick. So well, can we just pause that for a second and bring you in in two ticks? Because right. I'll just say a little bit about um, before Kay took over. So we're in one lock head youth hostel eating lots of pasta. Um, Bill and I set off from one lock head to run to Sankar. We took over from you because you'd run in in the dark to one lock head. Winnie, with Jim McQuinney. With Jim and, at the, and by the time we got to Sankar, we were an hour and a half ahead of schedule. Um, so at this point, Bill and I got into Bill's car and went off to look for somewhere to camp in the middle of Galloway Forest, no mobile phone coverage. Um, and exp I was meant to be starting running at half past eight the following morning. And that is all the information that we had, other than that we were an hour and a half um, earlier than that. And so Kay will now tell you something about what happened. <laughs> now Kay's a lady the... that knew the whole route already. Yes. She'd wrecked the whole I thing. I'm an expert, you see. So, and I would only come in, I think we've said already, because... Um, what have I got to do with it? Just no, speak. Just speak. <laughs> oh, I see, okay. Everyone here? Yeah. Okay. Because Jane Robertson had, had uh, dropped out. And I remember we were sitting in a, a pub in Edinburgh and... Um, I'd gone to the planning meetings and I remember saying to the others, oh, you young ones just go and do it because I was over 50 at the time when I did this, which doesn't seem like much now, but in those days when you were sort of over 50, you know, we were a bit sort of over the top. But anyway, I had done a lot of running on the Southern Upland Way because I'd, I'd run the West Highland Way and I'd used it in training and, and I knew it very well because we live fairly close to the Southern Upland Way. So I said, oh, I know it really well. It won't be a problem. I'll just drop in, you know, and I'll take Jane's uh, part in it. Um, anyway, all was going really well. And you might remember that um, on the first slide, I think, it talked about having somebody to run with you in the dark, and it mentioned a responsible adult. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'd just say that there was a very good person. Can I mention him? I think I'm allowed to mention it was Nick MacDonald, who was <laughs> one of the volunteers who was going to do the running in the dark with the of those of us who were running the race. Um, and so Nick and I set off. I remember that I knew the, the, the route pretty well. And Nick and I set off in the dark. I think it was about 3 o'clock in the morning, mm. pitch black, head torches, up this fairly rough forest track. And we ran and we ran. And I knew there was something wrong. And I kept saying to Nick, this isn't right, Nick. It's not right. We're, we're doing something wrong. And Nick kept saying in great enthusiasm, oh, it's fine. Come on, we're doing fine. Just keep going. So we go up this track, and I'm it, thinking all the time there was something wrong. We get to a sort of T-junction at the top of the track, and Nick says, yes, come on, we turn left here. And I say, no, Nick, that's not right. We don't turn left. We have to go right. No, 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 the, the sign says left. And, of course, there is a Southern Upland Way sign that points you left. And in the forest... There's this Covenanters Memorial, which I'd passed several times in training, and I knew we'd come to this memorial from the wrong direction. And at that point, I was desperate with Nick, saying, Nick, this is wrong, we mustn't go on. And he's saying, no, we're absolutely fine, let's go on. So I didn't have any alternative, really, but to just go with Nick, and we just went on down. And unfortunately, we ended up exactly back where we'd started about an hour before. <laughs> and Nick then agreed with me that we were in the wrong place, okay, because right. <laughs> where we'd started was there's a cottage, and it had a light on, even though it was the middle of the night. There was a light in the cottage. And I knew that the way we should have been going, we shouldn't have been near any houses whatsoever. We should just have been right in the middle of nowhere. And we got back to this cottage and Nick said, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I, th I think you're right. We went the wrong way. So, so then we had to just pick up ourselves, go off, set off up this track again, all the way up. And so I reckon we probably lost about two hours all doing this. Mm. So if anyone says about people running in the wrong direction on the Southern Upland Way in the middle of the night, it was me and Nick <laughs> McDonald, so I confess <laughs> to that. Thanks, Thank Kate. you very much. <laughs> um, lots more adventures happened. And this is the men finishing at this point, oh, maybe. Oh, Jamie, oh, do you no, want to see a few words? Do you want to see another adventure? No, I want you to go back and see what happened to you, and then I'll see what happened to me in the middle of the night. What happened to me? Not in the middle of the night. No, taking on from Kay or from whoever handed over to you. Because you were a bit... Or like, do you not want to say anything about that? If you don't, Remind me. It's okay. <laughs> so, I maybe do. So, so, so Kay 
bless her, and Nick. I mean, the problem is you've been running, you've, you've had, hardly had any rest. You, you're, you're doing all these back-to-back -back things, um, running really hard. So everybody assumes it's the runners that are hallucinating <laughs> rather than the support who are hallucinating. So just to, before we go on to what the men were doing, I want you to hear my sob story because um, Bill and I are camped in a really midgy place. We weren't camped, we were in his car because it was too midgy to, to pitch the tent. Um, really, really humid. We had to have the windows shut because of the midges. Um, and I was to be taking over, I, I thought, half past six in the morning in the middle of nowhere. So I had a half hour walk from Bill's car to where I had to wait for the next runner coming in. And because we'd been an hour and a half inside the schedule, when, I, when I'd last been in contact with anybody, I got there for half past six in the morning and was being bitten to hell because you know I didn't have any extra kit with me. I was in my shorts and a t-shirt. Um, and um, expecting to start anywhere between half past six and seven o'clock. And because of the delays in the middle of the night, which had impacted Nikki, who was handing on to me, didn't actually start running till 9.17. Mm -hmm. And all of those almost three hours, um, I was, I was bitten alive. By, so I was looking forward to getting to Calden's campsite and diving in the shower and then having a, little, <laughs> having a bit of a sleep in the tents, which our support team had pitched for us. Unfortunately, it had been too midgy for the support team to pitch the tents. So all of that went by the board. Anyway, sorry, on, on with the glory. I can't remember what the my glory story was. And the, the glory and the... Before the we talk about the men and finishing and the record, Jamie, would you like to add anything? I was told that you wanted to talk about your shorts, so that's what one of the lads said. So I was just saying that um, this was 1996 and we were on the top of our game, so it is a hard record, but I'd encourage anybody out there, any youngsters to have a go. Um, so we were all, so it'd be like under 55 minutes for Grand FE5, and um, Adam and Mark, good cross country runners, road runners. Um, win races in our own right, so it was a top team. Um, I'm only here tonight because Coyley has got a parents' evening at the school. Um, Gary is spending the winter in Portugal. Um, <laughs> Mark is training the youngsters in, in, um, in Lithgow of Falkirk. Um, and that's us, isn't it? Oh. And Adam is in darkest East Logan. <laughs> the message made it here. Um, but it is a, it's a great adventure, um, and we, we completed um, pretty much bang on schedule. I have to say, I don't remember any of the planning, because really, the ladies did the planning, and, <laughs> and we thought their plan was good, so we copied their plan. <laughs> <laughs> Just in, in case, made sure we weren't going to get lost, we set off two hours after them. <laughs> <laughs> that was it, that was the best bit of planning. Um, it was really a, a busy year, but... Um, so I, I think I only wrecked one of the legs. The others maybe have wrecked some others. Um, but I do remember um, I, I also got married that year. And um, it, it, anybody who's there who's not yet got married, the good tip is if you get married, get married in a different country and then leave your partner in the other country for at least a couple of months because it means you get adjusted to married life. Um, <laughs> but what I, the, the one flaw in my plan was... I hadn't quite told Joanne about this race. I said, well, I'm doing a wee race on Saturday. And as it was, Joanne, who's from Belfast, had just sold her house, packed up the house, put everything in the car, driven from Belfast to, got a ferry to Stranraer, driven to Edinburgh on the Friday night. And then um, the next day, she said, oh, what are we doing? It's the first weekend of... Now we're doing this on a full week. To Port Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> And we're actually, we're short to supporters, and I didn't have a car, she had a car. So her, her instruction was to get Brad Connor to one off head, I think, and think she spent that first night with various people, random people, in a, in a dormitory. Uh, we tried to, to cycle the Southern Upland Way on our mountain bikes last year. And I have to say, there's a lot of the wrong sort of tussocks, and it involved an awful lot of carrying your bike. And it took us three days, so <laughs> I, think, I think the runners might win if it's a runners versus cyclists. Okay. I've okay. got some more photos of you yep. if you want yeah. to see. Thank you, Jamie. So, once the boys finished, they had some antics. So they look young. 
<laughs> what I would want to say about about the not men. Sure about shorts. <laughs> <laughs> no, not <Ja> those ones. <laughs> ja Jamie's mentioned tussocks, but I think it, it needs to be noted that over that it was 212 miles in those days. It's now 214, but 212 miles in 27 hours. 39 minutes is 7.9 uh, miles uh, minutes a mile so to be running on tussocks in the dark so mm -hmm. 7.9 minutes a mile is yes, pretty perfect. amazing <laughs> And on the far sections, we were doing six-minute miles. Well, well, towards well, the end, you were doing those four <laughs> hundred metres yeah, sprints on the road. There was there was a four-mile road section, and Jamie, John, and Mark um, did did four hundred okay. metre. Um, intervals where we're thrown raining. out of the car, thrown out of the car, yeah. somebody, somebody jumped out, ran for 400 metres and so they picked up five minutes in, on their schedule in that piece. And then they had to wait for us for about seven hours, so you can see you're starting to get bored. <laughs> John's starting to get, get a bit restless. And here come the girls. Hey, and some supporters you can see in the background there. And we set a record of 35 hours and 51 minutes and that record still stands. So go beat that, girls. Yeah. And then Hillary's saying, come on, get that bottle of champagne open. Do you see that there? And then she was first to drink it. <laughs> um, if you're interested in the details, this is our time um, overall versus our predicted time. This is the whole team. You see the 27 hours the boys did here, 27 hours and 39 minutes. The girls, 35 hours and 51 minutes. But we had a fantastic time, all the runners, but the support team, they really made it for us and made it all happen like clockwork. And they were totally exhausted afterwards. And this is what happened to one of them. Who's <laughs> in the audience tonight. and might like to say a few words about <laughs> supporting us. <laughs> I think you drank, drank a bottle of wine. It was so tough. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Andy. <laughs> I think that's it. Yeah, we're happy to answer any, yeah, questions, any questions if there's, if there's yeah. time for it. Why did you go east to west? Oh, not west to east point. Because Livingston had done it that way and it we was, wanted to beat their record, Yeah, right? that was the rules. I don't think yeah. that was the rules to do that record. But you could do it the other way and set a different record if you wanted to. Yeah. Yeah, because sometimes it's good to run home, isn't it? Trophy. Oh, yes. Oh, John Coyle made us this lovely trophy. This is really heavy because it's got a big stone on it. And it's got the Carnetti bra. Because we runners were not particularly well endowed. <laughs> <laughs> and the plaques, unfortunately, come off. And it says on here, uh, the ladies really record Carnetti bombshells. But he didn't make a men's trophy, did he? No. So, anyway.